The images reveal the deepest look at the cosmos ever captured. The pictures from give us a snapshot from 600 million years after the Big Bang. We're seeing light that has journeyed for over 13 billion years to reach us. It's almost like a time machine. You're looking back into the far distant past. Well, they are the deepest and most detailed views of the universe we've ever seen and show light from galaxies that have taken billions of years to reach ours. NASA has just released more dramatic images taken from the world's most powerful telescope. The image over my shoulder is the southern ring and shows a planetary nebula caused by a dying star that, as NASA says, dispelled a large fraction of its mass in excessive ways. NASA says it can be seen in those images. And about 290 million light years away, there's this, the Stefan's Quintet, and it's located in the constellation Pegasus. This was the first picture released by NASA, which shows some galaxies that date back more than 13 billion years close to the dawn of time. Well, I've been speaking to Dr. Martin Barstow, Professor of Astrophysics and Space Science at the University of Leicester. Martin chaired the Space Telescope Institute Council, which oversees the operations of Webb. And also to Dr. Sarah Kendrew, who's an astronomer with the European Space Agency. They told me what they made of the dying star, first of all. Well, it's great to be here, and isn't it wonderful after six months of getting the telescope ready to, to work, then we see these absolutely gorgeous pictures. Uh, I've been following it in real time as I've been waiting to come on. Uh, and the, the dying star image is, is absolutely spectacular. That's an area of research that I work in, and to see the detail of that cloud of gas that's been blown off by this star that is turning from a red giant into a white dwarf as, as we watch it is absolutely amazing. I'll come back to, to what you can glean and learn from all of this in a moment. But, uh, Sarah, to you, because I know you've seen these pictures too. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, they are really spectacular. Um, so for the past six months, we here in Baltimore uh, have been working with the telescope day to day. So in a way, you know, we're used to seeing images from the telescope. Uh, but we've been very focused on the engineering aspects, um, you know, testing all the functions and doing kind of very boring but necessary performance measurements. Uh, so for us as well, this is incredibly exciting to get these first kind of beautiful uh, multi-wavelength images uh, shown to us like this. It's really spectacular. I mean, these images, the one we had overnight, which was so startling. I, I mean, scientists uh, who, who saw it, I mean, jaws were dropping when they saw that original picture. But, uh, I mean, the phrase, this is like a time machine, to see light from billions of years ago, and, and there's the original image on our screen. Ju just explain that to, to viewers who perhaps don't understand the reference there to, to going back in time. Martin. Well, of course, light travels at a finite speed, uh, what we <laughs> commonly call the speed of light, which is about 386,000 miles a second. So it's pretty fast. But over the vast space of the universe, it takes many billions of years for light to travel from one side to the other. Uh, and the ex universe is expanding at the same time. So it's, it's, it's quite complicated. But the simple picture is that the light leaving those most distant galaxies, which are the ones in the background of that image, those are the most exciting ones, has spent about 13 billion years traveling across the universe to get to us. And we're looking at those faint red smudges, which are the first indications of star formation and the creation of galaxies in the universe, something that Webb Space Telescope was actually designed to study. You were saying uh, the sorts of things instantly that you're looking at to trying to glean from, from this snapshot. What are the things that you're, you're hoping to learn? So in this particular case, we're interested in, in the composition of the gas in that nebula. Planetary nebulae like this, which is the, the proper title for them, are basically reprocessing sites for pulling material from a star back into interstellar space. And so that is a way of recycling the contents of the star uh, and leading to more star formation. And in fact, it's why we come to exist. Without that cosmic recycling, the important elements that are important for life, like carbon, nitrogen and oxygen, would not have been spread out into interstellar space uh, and able to form stars and planets like the one that we actually live on. And scientists are saying we are going to fundamentally change what we understand 
about the universe. How and why, Sarah? So, yes, that, that's, uh, I, I believe that's correct. So the Webb telescope is it's bigger, it's more powerful uh, than anything uh, we've had before. Um, the images we see now are really just scratching the surface. So we've gone, we've taken some beautiful images of things that we know are spectacular and interesting and fascinating. But because we're making such a big leap in power and in, in sensitivity of this telescope, we're going to discover all kinds of things that we, you know, we didn't even know we were looking for. Well, let's continue and let's talk now to Garth Illingworth, uh, Professor of Astronomy at the University of California in Santa Cruz, who's in Baltimore. And it's an absolute delight to have you on the program because I know you were involved in the very uh, drawing up of this concept 35 years ago uh, to see it reach its fruition in the last 24 hours. I mean, what has that been like? It's absolutely unbelievable. You know, I think that uh, when we developed the concept, we were just, uh, we knew this would be powerful, but I'm just blown away by how incredibly rich and amazing these images are. Tell me more, because we've got that image that was released overnight with Joe Biden on our screen, and I'll come to what we've just seen in the last hour in a moment or two, but when you saw this image, uh, you must have imagined what a telescope like this could give us. Did this outdo what you'd even anticipated? Absolutely. So it was interesting when I discussed at the launch with uh, the BBC, the telescope, I said it was... Webb was Hubble on steroids. I'm running out of superlatives. It's so far beyond that. What we've seen in the last hour with these images is going to keep scientists busy for weeks, weeks, months with remarkable new science. I've not seen as much new science in any single period of my whole life. Let me put on uh, some of the images we've had in the last hour, that dying star, first of all, because uh, you, you talk about the, the new science and what we can learn. When you're seeing images like this, for, for people who are not experts, what are you looking for? What, what is this actually telling you that we didn't know before? I think it's the richness, richness of the detail there. There's two things. One is it's incredibly detailed. But it also is exploring new regimes that we have not had that opportunity. So that combination of detail and being able to work into the infrared and to be able to see the structure and to explore what's actually happening in a nebula like that is just amazing. And if I could just comment back on the other image we just saw, I mean, that was an image that is like, 12 hours worth of data and that is deeper as deep as the 500 hour image we took with Hubble over 10 years and there's so much more information there about the earliest galaxies the first galaxies there's a richness there that uh, we're just looking that we're dying as a astronomers to explore when that data becomes available tomorrow. You've got such a huge smile in your face, even as you're describing it. You, <laughs> you don't even know where you're going to start in terms of trying to work out where to look and, and where to go with, with the science. But uh, in terms of, of how this telescope actually works, what a great phrase you used a minute ago, which was it's, it, it's, uh, it's Hubble on steroids. But I mean, how does this thing actually give us images of this quality? So it's much bigger than Hubble. It's cold, it's far away from Earth, it's in such a wonderful place to, to explore the universe, and it's so much more sensitive than anything we've ever had before on the ground or in space. So it's that power, that sensitivity and the uh, preciseness of the images because it's a much bigger mirror, and the instruments are, and the technology is so much more up to date. And so it's this combination that's not sort of, oh, it's not just a factor of two or three or five. It's hundreds of times better. And, of course, uh, one of the key objectives is to, to learn more about uh, the universe, to, to effectively go back in time. But the other is, of course, uh, the, the probe for uh, other planets to see if they could be habitable. Very much so. So when this telescope was first conceived, we really didn't know about exoplanets. We knew that they must, some must be there. We wanted to explore them. But the opportunity really came about as Hubble discovered exoplanets. We've learned more. And so what we saw today was an absolutely astonishing 
spectrum, the, the spectrum where we could spread the light out and actually see what the planet's atmosphere was like. That is just unbelievable. We've done some of that before, but the ability to do this so quickly, so incredibly quickly, is something that Webb, and to do it on much fainter planets, is something that Webb will just add huge dimension to our understanding of planets and whether there are ones that might have life on board. As you've been talking, we've been rolling through the new pictures. I want to put uh, Stefan's quintent on to the, to the screen and uh, get your thoughts uh, finally on, you know, these are the first 24 hours of images. So what do you anticipate in the coming weeks, months? How is it actually going to be designed? What it points at? How long it's going to take uh, to provide us uh, uh, the data that, that you want to, to explore? Yes, so we actually have a whole year of observations planned out for the science. The science community put in proposals, got allocated time. Some of that science data is going to come out and will be available this week. So we'll already see some new data in addition to what these images show. And I have to say something about that Stefan's quintet image. It was just unbelievable to see all the structure and the detail and that active nucleus, this black hole uh, nucleus in the galaxy shining out through for the first time. The wonderful star formation, those red spots all over the place. It, that image is such a wealth of data. I you know all my colleagues are going to be, ah, oh, this is amazing. We're going to be working on this for a long time. Listen, I can't le let you go away without 30 seconds, if you would, in terms of your personal pride, because back in 2010, Congress were, were looking at perhaps shutting this down. It was just too expensive. You pushed through vital changes at NASA. How proud personally is a moment for you to see that it actually has concluded finally and given us this, this treasure trove? Absolutely. You know, when you think about it, there's 10,000 or more people have worked on this. It takes a huge commitment. Scientists, engineers, managers, politicians, all coming together to make something like this work. And I think it's a testament to our nation, to the Europeans who are part of this, the ESA, to the Canadians, the US, who work together to bring this about. This absolutely remarkable science mission, one of the greatest science missions of all time, I would say. Garth Enworth, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, thanks very much. And you can, you can maybe just stop smiling uh, now that we've uh, finished the interview. <laughs> thanks so much for your time. I'll be smiling all day. Thank you very much. More on that a little later.